Welcome to the week seven online lecture for counseling techniques. Today we will discuss the initial interview. This slide presents to you the steps in the systematic problem solving model. The first step indicated on the slide is the definition of problems and barriers faced. Problems need to be defined in ways that help us to determine how to deal with them, including contextual and contributing factors. In addition, there may be multiple problems and problems will often have multiple components. Goals need to be defined for the problems identified in terms that are as objective as possible so as to monitor progress in accomplishing them. In addition, sub-goals or steps towards ultimate goals need to be defined. Sometimes people come with a concern stated in the form of a problem. Example, my husband and I aren't getting along. In other instances, people may come with a concern stated in the form of a goal. For example, I didn't graduate from high school, so I want to get my GED or high school equivalency. Although problems and goals may be the flip side of one another, it seems best to start with where the person is coming from. If the concern is stated as a problem, then we can explore the problem, examples, contextual and contributing factors, and so forth toward defining it in a way that we can figure out what to do. If the concern is stated as a goal, such as wanting to get the GED, we would probably guess that since the person is coming to us for help, he or she must have something standing in the way of accomplishing that goal on his or her own, which are barriers that need to be identified and may need to be defined as problems in their own right. Identification of interventions or strategies has three components. First, we should think of as many different interventions as possible for solving a problem and accomplishing a goal, which becomes a brainstorming problem. Some of the interventions may be services in the community where we would call upon others to help in addressing a problem. For example, a GED tutoring program at a community college while other interventions might be counseling or other interventions that we would provide ourselves. Second, we need to identify the preferred strategies to implement from among those identified, which becomes a decision-making problem. Third, we need to organize the interventions into a comprehensive treatment or service plan. The interventions and strategies are implemented as the next step. Finally, evaluation runs throughout the process. If goals or objectives have been defined objectively, we can determine whether our interventions are helpful in moving toward accomplishing the goals and, if not, consider revisions to the plan. You've been asked to read the Bourbon and Drought 2012 chapter on assessment. Why do you think I might have included that chapter here? As this is a class on counseling techniques, not assessment. Pause the video now to think about this and jot down your answer on a sheet of paper before resuming the video. The answer that I'm looking for is that the first three steps in the problem solving process, problem definition, goal definition, and development of a treatment or service plan, are all components of assessment. In addition, the Bourbon 2008 chapter on assessment interviewing was included because the interview is by far the most widely used assessment procedure, including initial interviews, which are heavily loaded with assessment. On this slide is a sample treatment plan for the problem of anger management. I have also posted a copy of the treatment plan to Blackboard. This is an example of a treatment plan based on the systematic problem solving model. As you can see, the plan adheres to the systematic problem solving model as it includes a clear definition of the problem, a list of goals and sub goals, the sub goals are the objectives, and interventions aligned with each objective. Missing here is the evaluation component. Pause the video now and think about how you might evaluate whether or not the objectives have been achieved. Jot down your thoughts. Press play when you have finished this task. Save your notes from this activity. We will discuss goal setting in further depth in a later lecture, including the development of measurable objectives. 
One strategy that can be used during the initial interview and beyond to assist with problem definition and treatment planning using the systematic problem solving model is the identification of assets, limitations, and preferences. All individuals have a host of assets, limitations, and preferences, or ALPs, that they bring with them to counseling. By using carefully chosen questions, your task is to assist the individual to identify these ALPs. It can actually be very helpful to maintain a list of assets, limitations, and preferences as a part of client record keeping to facilitate counseling and planning. You will be asked to do so during your checkouts. You can find a copy of the ALP sheet on Blackboard under course documents. The assets, limitations, and preferences are always formulated as hypotheses that are fluid and subject to revision, additions, deletions as counseling progresses. Some assets and limitations might be relatively mundane, for example, not having a driver's license, while others might be more complex, depression or low self-esteem. In identifying ALPs, it is important to consider both the person and the surrounding situation. For example, lack of family support could be a significant limitation that is a part of the surrounding situation. It is also important to consider ALPs in all four domains listed on this slide, medical, social, psychological, and vocational educational. ALPs are often intertwined in that people usually prefer to do things that they are good at and avoid tasks or situations that highlight their limitations. Again, the identification of assets, limitations, and preferences should always be construed as hypotheses with varying degrees of confidence in them. You may also either ask clients as a homework assignment to complete the sheet for themselves or complete it with them in the session. This is a form of concurrent documentation where the counselor and client complete documentation collaboratively in session. We will now do an exercise in identifying assets, limitations, and preferences using a video of a woman named Leslie Halverson and her application for services. This video demonstrates how an initial interview can be like peeling an onion, with always more coming to light as the interview progresses. However, please note that I am showing this video not as an example of using the skills that we have been working on in class, but rather as an exercise in identifying assets, limitations, and preferences, focusing primarily on the client in the interview. Your attention should be on the client responses and how these align with ALPs. Please pause the video for a moment and take out a sheet of paper, turn it sideways, and make three columns labeled Assets, Limitations, and Preferences. There is also a printable version of the sheet on Blackboard. Pause the video now and press play when you are ready to begin the activity. As you watch the video, write down any assets, limitations, and preferences that you are able to identify from what Leslie says. Please note that the quality of the video is very low. Please focus on the audio. Come in. Uh, okay, let's open the I just got your application. Today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what your current situation is. Uh, is this your first contact with the people Yeah. Okay. Maybe uh, the best thing at, at this point then is to give you just some background on the world and uh, so forth. Okay. Uh, this is the individual vocation for the state of Wisconsin. We're an organization uh, that works with people that are eligible for our services. Okay. Now, eligibility is based upon, number one, having a medically substantiated condition, and two, that that condition is inferior with your ability to obtain or maintain employment. I know that sounds like a little weird kind of but we're going to talk about it. Okay. Um, now, uh, what we do initially is when you fill out an application here and we'll go over the application, and uh, I'll be answering some questions. Uh, about your current status. Now, our program here is tailored to meet the individual needs of the person who's applying for services. Each person is a little bit different. But um, I, I understand that we're focused on 
uh, work, you know, uh, not in the sense of employment service, but uh, more in the sense of uh, maybe a specialized uh, employment service where career planning and vocational sorts of objectives um, and evaluation of just what you to do vocationally is important. Do you, do you pay medical? I know that you pay like medical bills. Okay. <coughs> well, you have a lot of medical bills. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, talk talk about we'll talk a little bit about that today. Uh, we are not uh, like public assistance service or uh, social security, but we, uh, you know, a person is entitled to all medical bills paid or whatever. But the financial services that we do provide are uh, in line with the specific vocational objective for training or if you're not eligible for services. Now, during the eligibility period, uh, we'll be evaluating uh, your, your medical condition. <coughs> By that, I mean, we'll, excuse me, we'll be getting uh, reports from physicians that you've seen uh, or any other doctors if you've been hospitalized. Um, and our medical consultants will review that. Uh, we need to uh, develop more information to substantiate your eligibility. We'll be able to pay for some medical business. It's, it's in line with the medical You are medical and I just don't know how to so many of you that you take care of them. Yeah, that's just what I'm saying. Because I don't have insurance because I have a lot of money. Okay. How do you understand what I was saying just recently? Don't know. That you try to take care of some medical bills? We take care of medical bills if medical bills occur during the course of the program. And also, uh, we pay for medical evaluation. I understand you're feeling a little bit uptight in the level of the bills right now. Yeah, I go to the doctor for weeks. Well, there's there's, there's, there's different, different ways of uh, dealing with that situation right now. Have you applied for uh, any sort of uh, medical assistance through the account? No, my husband is not interested in getting Oh, he does. Okay. We, just, we just don't have enough for insurance. And besides that, you know, no insurance. Have you seen the doctor about that? Yeah. Well, I'll go And have you checked out on insurance? We checked out one of the American family insurance. It was like $94. We just can't afford that. Well, uh, you know, as we get to know each other more, as we talk, uh, there are some possibilities where you might be able to pick up some insurance. Uh, one place that comes to my mind uh, immediately is the Crookville uh, Cooperative, and that's located in the same building here on the uh, third floor. But that might be a possibility, and it's less than $95 a month. Um, if your husband's making eight hundred and fifty dollars uh, per month, does he have any sort of insurance with the uh, uh, company that he's with? No, he's a janitor for the well, like a maintenance man. And this is the department. But I don't know, we're looking to insure something, but I don't know, I think there's just something he doesn't like insurance or something. I don't know. I don't know what you're doing. Well, we can't buy insurance, but again, yeah, we don't get it. I just think he just doesn't think it should be. Well, uh, maybe uh, he just isn't really sure where to go right now for insurance. And it is, you know, expensive. But, uh, you know, there are some possibilities. And, uh, like this, a uh, group health co-op might be a possibility to check it in. But today, I'm not really sure if you can find that out by call him. And you can talk to us with your husband. Next time we meet, we can talk a little bit more about that. Okay. Uh, right now, uh, I think it's important that we talk a little bit about our agency and uh, the programs that we have here and what we're working Okay. Now, as I said before, we're you know, vocational rehabilitation uh, and that uh, the important part of our program is you know, where you're at right now, vocation, or you want to go, job on this. Um, if there is a training that you're interested in, and uh, uh, 
following might be facilitated. Right now I'm at MPTC. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, what type of program are you going to get into? Secretarial. I want to take medical secretary, but it took too long. I'm looking at it, I don't want to take that long. So I want to take like a medical course. Okay. And uh, let's see, how long have we been in the program? Almost the same person. First person? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, how long have we been taking? Right now I'm taking 18. That's the same problem. Thank you. 
hoping we set up the first part of next week. Okay. And then we'll meet right after the, that meeting. And uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, discuss a little bit more about the program. Now, the one thing that, that uh, you know, I want to talk with you about today, the first step, as I said, is determining how much we'll build Okay. Now, we're in the school program right now, but it sounds like we're pretty much sure of where that's going. If you want to complete it, or do you want to continue with it? Is that true? I don't work with my students. School counselors would have to have a lot of help to come in with my What's his name? Mr. Smith. You're going to say next week? Yeah. No, this week. This week. And, you know, he knows that I take a lot of credit and I'm in here and I'm studying and doing all that. So, I don't know, maybe I'll try to talk about that. So, you're going to talk to him now? Have you asked my son in the form of one I was going to talk to him. But he knows that I have a lot of credit. Maybe, you know, maybe I'm going to talk to him. That's what I'm thinking of. It, it, it also sounds like uh, you're sort of not sure about whether you want to continue the next semester in the program. Is that true? Oh, we are having a lot of money. It is around the world. I think it's the money. And the one thing that, you know, probably is easy to do is uh, be in another basic support group. Uh, if you do decide that you want to go more towards jobs rather than the continuing as a global next semester, uh, it sounds like you have some financial problems. Um, this is something that we will look to do more next year. And after you talk with uh, Mr. Smith, I think maybe you uh, might want to tell him that you have to talk to me. And if it's uh, you know, uh, something that you agree to, uh, Maybe Mr. Smith could give me a call from him after we talk next week. Me, I think if I went to school, I wouldn't be here. That's a good idea. No, not necessarily. If you're not eligible for agency and the uh, program that you're in, is something that, uh, you know, the basis of our discussion seems to be realistic, you know, that, that you can do. Um, there is a, you know, a chance that uh, we may be able to participate in that program to some degree, uh, financially and also in uh, a vocational counseling sort of way. I guess, uh, you know, I sort of see the situation right now as uh, one of maybe helping you, uh, you know, determine the decision that you, you want to, to make that's going to be good for you. Uh, sounds like you know, really have a lot of pressure right now. Yeah. Um, and I think this is something that the mental health center is going to be important. I think in uh, checking out, uh, you know, a. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, for just reading some of the And, uh, excuse me for that oh, okay. interruption. <laughs> but uh, what, what we'll be doing is, uh, I think, you know, right when we uh, had this meeting here, uh, I think you should go downstairs and talk with the, uh, the health center downstairs. And, uh, you know, hopefully, um, you'll be able to. Uh, you know, find out what their feeling is. I think it's very important that you have health insurance. I think maybe one, one way of discussing it uh, you know, with your husband <coughs> is a uh, situation that uh, your medical bills are not and they're, they're going to be so much every week, every month, uh, and uh, they may be more than the, you know, paying a premium on health insurance. So it might be more uh, physically sound or you know, more and more financially uh, sound to uh, you know, go with health insurance. I thought that was the only one 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 that 
the next week, and then we just end this interview. We'll make the appointment time for next week. Um, I'll also uh, give you time and I'll send some calls so that we have the appointment for you and I'll send some calls. And then, uh, you know, I, I think that there's a good chance of uh, your mother's good eligibility here. Um, we can set up some sort of issues and, uh, you know, again, whatever you decide to do, uh, I see as a sort of maybe helping you to determine what you think is best for yourself. You know, in terms of the short run and the long run. Okay. So, uh, what's we'll that? Okay. 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 So how would you use the ALPs? <clears throat> With limitations, there are basically two ways to go. Either to work around them in making life choices, so as to capitalize on assets and limit the impact of limitations, or to try to intervene so as to change a limitation into an asset, for example, to attempt to improve social skills if that is a limitation for the individual. Regarding identifying problems that are possibly in need of intervention, a counselor would go through the limitations and identify those that might be priorities to target for intervention. We are seeking to maximize assets, minimize limitations, and accommodate preferences. This slide highlights things to accomplish during an initial interview. First, it is important to address client concerns, exploring them in depth with the use of follow-up questions and active listening responses. A good initial interview does not typically walk through all of the topics to be covered in the lockstep, but, it, but follows up on client leads and obtaining information, while also building good relationships. Initial interviews also include initiating the assessment process, information giving, and assuring the individual that they have come to the right place and that you are ready to help. For next week's class, please bring with you a copy of the ALP sheet that you completed as part of this video lecture.